What are the three biggest mistakes? Hmm. Uh, you see, the problem is I've made so many. <laughs> the three biggest ones, I, I, I want to give you my 10 biggest ones. <laughs> but um, okay, in a nutshell, firstly, we hired wrongly. Entrepreneurs are always tempted to hire the cheapest, especially when they're starting their business. What they don't understand is that the difference between hiring a mediocre person and a brilliant person in a certain salary band is probably about 20%. You'll pay a 20% premium for the best in a certain salary band, but you will get 100% more. It's a no-brainer. So hire right first time. Cost you a little bit more, you get a lot more back. The second biggest mistake I've made is not embracing systems and processes sufficiently. Our business could have run much smoother and we could have grown much faster with a lot less pain if only we had embraced systems and processes. And the third biggest mistake, and I'll probably say the biggest, is we didn't focus enough on our culture. A business is its culture. Everything else changes. The founders come and go. The products come and go. The market, the suppliers, the clients, they come and they go. But if you look at a business that's been around for 100 years, 150 years, what is it about the business that's made it succeed through all of those changes? It's its culture. And the mistake we made is we didn't focus on it in the beginning sufficiently. And with culture, you have to articulate it. You have to express it, you have to live and breathe it. We didn't do it in the beginning. The most recent mistake we've made, the one I'm still paying a price for, we didn't embrace technology enough. Every business today is a technology business. And every division of yours is a tech startup. You have to start thinking like that. If you do, you'll succeed. We didn't, and we've struggled. We've changed our mindset. We're going to embrace and invest behind technology. I think the worst thing I've ever done is hiring the wrong people. Um, assuming that because I'm a startup, um, I should go for you know, the people that are going to cost me the least amount of money because I can't afford it. Um, so, so, so that can cost you your business. Uh, I, I say that without, without a doubt in my mind. Hiring the wrong people can actually result in your business closing down. Um, so it, I've learned that it is important to rather pay the price. And sometimes it doesn't even have to come in the form of you paying a, a high salary. You could negotiate with the person that I cannot meet your market-related salary package, but certainly I can give you equity in my business. So find creative ways of incentivizing people to come and work with you. The second thing is... When your business grows, you have no choice but to delegate because when you start out as an entrepreneur, you tend to be a jack of all trades. But as a business grows, it becomes important for you to delegate. And one of the biggest mistakes that I made is in my delegation, I also delegated my responsibility. So um, lesson learned, you can delegate functions and duties, but always, always take responsibility of, of, you know, of, of the, the area of work, especially when it has to do with regulatory related matters or things that can really uh, impact on your business. Uh, you know, both positively and negatively. So don't delegate responsibility, just uh, delegate duties to the, to the extent that you can. The third biggest mistake, hmm, I have to think about this one, sorry, I haven't thought about three. Um, I think it's probably not planning appropriately for growth. I have learned that, and I think this is something that a lot of entrepreneurs need to appreciate. I have learned that whilst we all get excited about the prospects of your business growing, an unplanned growth or an improperly planned for growth can actually kill your business because growth tends to require a lot of injection of capital into your business as you grow. We don't realize this. You have to inject a lot of resources and a, a, a lot of capital. If you're not properly resourced financially and otherwise, your business can actually die as a result of that because it can choke on its growth. So I think planning for growth, again, is probably one of the most important lessons that I have learned as an entrepreneur. Keeping my eye off the ball, actually, uh, from a, so I, I'm an accountant. So you'd think that I want to see how my business is performing every day, and this is what I require of the, 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 the investees that I put, I put money into. 
Um, and for the past few months, again, because I've been dealing with growth, I've had my eye off the ball completely in terms of how am I performing on a monthly basis financially. And I woke up a, a few weeks ago and I realized that um, there are certain amounts uh, outstanding uh, that should have been paid a long time ago. And now I'm now sitting with potential bad debt. So essentially I'm losing money, although I've made business. Um, and I think if I had not uh, lost the plot or rather I lost focus on my management accounts, my um, um, aging, my debtors aging, I would have been able to pick up the problem much earlier and being, been able to resolve the problem much earlier. So this is another thing uh, that entrepreneurs take for granted. We think that when you generate income, it somehow translates into cash coming into the bank, but it doesn't necessarily. So that I would say that's the, the last big mistake that I made. <laughs> I realized that I paid very heavy school fees every time I have to start a business from scratch, purely because when you start from scratch, it means that you've got to start learning the business from the beginning. And there's no opportunity for anyone to teach you the ropes. So over the years, when my business is closed down, my jump group closed down, and I restarted it in 2009, I made a deal and a promise to myself that, you know what, I'm rather going to partner with people who are already there because it gives you an opportunity to learn faster and to kill the school fees. So that when I am in that space, I'm also guaranteeing quality to clients. Because you see what happens if you, if you are learning too much and you are trying things out, you tend to make lots of mistakes. And those mistakes can, can, can cost you a reputation. So what I do a lot these days, I've got these 12 entrepreneurs that I mentor over time. And, and they're all starting their businesses from scratch. And the mistakes that they, they do cost them a bit, but they are learning. And I think it, it, it's, it's good to start from scratch and to learn. But at my level, it's good to partner because I cannot afford with my reputation to still learn. I must rather partner with people who know what they're doing and learn quickly from what they're doing and then take my business from there to guarantee quality. The second part is that uh, the suppliers that you choose are critical to the success of your business. Now, if you choose the wrong suppliers who become the output of your business. It becomes very dangerous if you've got the wrong supplier because ultimately the output of your business now reflects on the capabilities of your business. So I chose wrong suppliers in the past because they were my friends and I wanted to do favors and it was BEE and all those many things. But now I scrutinize suppliers and I've got systems in my organization whereby suppliers are checked very carefully because even with the recent entrepreneurs that I'm training, sometimes they choose wrong suppliers and then those suppliers can hurt the organization. So what I've learned is that there must be a systematic way of managing the choice of suppliers because they ultimately uh, reflect on the output of your organization. So that's the business mistakes that I've made around the, the, my supply chain in terms of my choices. The, 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 the third one is uh, uh, the human resources. Uh, the, the type of people that I chose in the past, they used to be based purely on sometimes on how they look. No, sometimes the chick looks nice and hot, and she's most likely was guaranteed of a, of, of a, of, of a job, you know, because I thought, no, she'd look good, the company would look good, and also the environment would be sexy and encouraging. But, but ultimately, is that your friends and the sexy people out there are not the ultimate solution for your company. You have to go through proper uh, 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 ways of recruiting people. It, I know it costs a bit of money to find a, a recruitment, a professional recruitment agency, but that's what I've had to resort to uh, 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 recently because the cost of employing the wrong people actually costs you more than employing the right people because the right people actually are the ones that guarantee you value. Now, when you employ, when you want to pay peanuts, you will get monkeys. Now, if you employ the right people first time, they actually are the ones that build the company on your behalf. The last one that I wanted to, uh, to, to, to share, the, some of the mistakes that I, I made was, was to try and do everything in-house. I mean, I wanted to do everything. I mean, literally, I wanted to print, because I've been publishing and hospitality. So I wanted to do everything in-house. And, and, and uh, in-house means that you must find all this expertise and have them in-house. And the cost of retaining those expertise when there's no business coming in is very heavy. As a result, that in the uh, recent times, I've decided to outsource and only use those necessary expertise when it is required. 
And then once the job is done, then I let go of those resources. Then I don't have to carry the cost and retain the cost of managing those resources in-house. So most of, in most cases now, most of my businesses, I outsource and I also have shared services within the group. So if someone does design within the group, then they, design, they do design for all the companies in the group. So it just becomes easier than retaining the different offerings and the different solutions all over the place. So shared services and outsourcing have seemed to work very well for me. I will tell you the biggest mistake that has cost me my business is getting people to have shareholding in my companies very quickly, purely because they seem nice, they seem to, without really proving their worth. You understand? Most people don't have to prove their worth before you can, in fact, even with my employees, I put them through a three months trial first, I put them through probation before I can commit to long-term contracts. It's the same as partners also, and, 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 and you, we tend to, because we like this person, we like the, the vibe that they carry, but we don't know really what they have, you know, what the capabilities they have. Then we give them 50% of our company, you know, to that guy. And yet, the biggest mistake is that when you now find that this guy is actually useless, he's already 50% of, of, of owner of your company. And what do you do? The biggest problem is to now get rid of him. And it's so tough to get rid of because it's gonna take half your business. So I'm very, very careful at giving people shareholding in my company. I'd rather hold on my shareholding in my company for a while and then see how, what value they add and then decide upon the value that they've created within the group and the company, then decide on what they're gonna give them. So that's the biggest mistake I've been making that a lot of those mistakes recently, especially also with the entrepreneurs that are in my system, you know, where I, I tend to, to, to register a company with them, I become 50%. No, now what I do, I register a company 100% of my group, and then after they've proven themselves over six, to, six months to a year, then I give them a share. It's been a tough journey, trust me. Three biggest mistakes. Number one, and this is going to sound philosophical, but it's true. I personally didn't dream big enough. And that's a mistake. Because if you limit your dreaming, you limit what you think you can do, you limit how you pursue it. You place a ceiling on yourself that's not necessary. So in the early days, that was a big one, is we dreamt purely for our own little small space. By the way, let me just take a moment. This is a huge issue for black entrepreneurs in this country. In the main, they think get a tender from government or get a taxi or get a spaza shop. We're not thinking build a Facebook, but it's a business. So why can't you think global? This limited dreaming thing is a huge thing. Um, so that would be my first mistake. The second mistake was taking too long to make decisions that were difficult. In the early days, I used to, to think that the more time you take in making a decision, the better the decision. Not so. The quality of the decision doesn't get better because you took more time. It really just doesn't. It's about whether or not you have enough evidence to make a decision. The better the evidence, the better the decision. But time doesn't indicate the quality of that decision. So I had to unlearn this terrible habit I'd learned of saying, let me think about it. Let me think about it. It's not good enough. Make the call now because time is the most expensive asset you've got in a business. It's a single thing you cannot manufacture, you cannot resell, you can't claim it back from SARS. Once it's gone, it's gone. And then the third mistake would be selecting a poor group of people and people who didn't see the vision I saw. And that again limits your business, but it also limits your ability of your business to, to build because you've selected people who are poor, poor in skills, poor in a belief system, poor in their attitude, and that's really important stuff. Selecting people who will go with you on the journey. The power of Martin Luther King wasn't that he said, I have a dream. It was that he had 40,000 people in front of him who saw the dream he had. And if you don't have that as an entrepreneur, you're not gonna get there.